Hello there, fly human, and welcome to another week of shop review and also event review this week because there is also going to be a new event. So, what is worth buying in the shop and is the event worth grinding? Let's find that out. This time in the resource section, we have some decent bundles right here. The finishing touch is the biggest one, also the best one here. 6k gold and 100 boosters each. If you need the gold, if you need the boosters, these can be a fine tool to get that. Obviously, always watch out that they don't include credits because then the value kind of goes into the toilet and I kind of say that every shop review, so hello. Now, these bundles where you get gold for gold doesn't really make all that much sense either. If this would be pure credit boosters, then it would be worth thinking about, especially if you need a lot of credits. However, like this, you're just buying gold with gold, but you're getting less back than you buying it for so it doesn't really make any sense like this i don't recommend it and truly showing how bad of a deal the ml951 for 8.5k really is here we have two tanks for the same price and obviously the times fives are locked to the vehicle unfortunately making them worth significantly less but you'll get a leprechaun's gold avatar again because leprechauns it doesn't add any value, but you get it anyway. And the Super Pershing is not a good tank. It does have an extremely high credit coefficient, so it's good at that. However, in terms of a medium tank, it really isn't the best. It at least does have 205 millimeters of penetration, which is better than some other tier 8 mediums that have 180. But overall, this vehicle isn't really one that you want to pick up. It's relatively slow for a medium tank. The armor, while being better than most medium tanks... It is very easily penetrable up here in the cabal, and you can also penetrate this spot right here, or just simply the lower plate. Just don't fire heat out of this, because as you can see, it is a spaced plate, so the heat will get stuck here. So I don't recommend firing heat at it, but generally, it's a tank that's somewhat easy to beat, especially with the cabal on top. Don't try to shoot at this. Probably, overall, this is one of the lowest premium tanks on the list that I would consider buying. Now, with the Eagle, it's a little bit different, because this vehicle is essentially just a Pershing, but one tier lower, obviously adjusted for a tier 7 in terms of its performance. 160 penetration, which is abysmal. But 225 half damage, 0.33 accuracy, 10 degrees of gun depression. I like the Super Pershing. It's a lot faster, but still nothing out, out of the world. And the armor is, well, you have turret armor, but you don't have any on hull. So it's a vehicle that you can have, but you don't need whatsoever. So basically, 8.5k right here. It's a good price, but you're not getting good tanks for it. Right, so I wouldn't recommend something like this. Then we move on to the Kennedy one, which I think I forgot last week. So the times fives are locked to the vehicle, which is not a great thing. And the 24 euros for the Kennedy one. It kind of does depend whether you want this vehicle. I did put it at number four on my top five tier nine. So I do rate this vehicle quite highly, I guess. But it can be somewhat difficult to play if you're a beginner player. Well, if you're a beginner player, you shouldn't have a tier nine premium tank to begin with. This vehicle is a good tank. Good penetration, 350 alpha damage, three short auto loader. The inch clip is 3.5 seconds. Isn't the best, but it still can work. Seven degrees of gun depression, which is a lot for most Soviet vehicles. The mobility that's it's a heavy tank. Well, it's gonna have heavy tank mobility. So overall, it's a good vehicle for the advanced player. It can be worth it in this bundle as well. Obviously, the extra value in here isn't really that much. You got camos, you got mystery boxes, and you got lock time. So I've so the extra value added on here is not really that great. But the vehicle itself is a good tank that I can recommend. And the ML1951, I've already spoken about it last week, that this is a bad price for the vehicle, especially because it lacks any other add-ons besides lock times fives and camouflages and uh, this attachment, which the only thing it does is uh, annoy you while you're looking down the sides of your vehicle. So I don't know why anyone would want this. It's extremely annoying. So you're basically buying a distraction. Anyway, 8.5k for this vehicle, not really worth it. If it be 7.5k, 7k, we can talk about it. 8.5 with this configuration. It's just, I don't see the value in it because the ML-91, while it is one of the upper level of premium tanks, basically at your rate, if you want the experience, you can play the ML-1. If you want the credits, you can play a better vehicle that has been sold for cheaper. And then for, I think, the fifth week in a row, the heavy offensive is... One of the best bundles in the shop right now. 10k for two good vehicles. Locked times fives, but they also include boosters. Further adding to the value of this bundle. So the value of the bundle here is very good. And the tanks in the bundle 
are also very good, sort of. I mean, the T77, one of the best tier eights out there, and the KV5 is a very interesting vehicle that is also somewhat new player friendly. The T77 isn't new player friendly at all, so again, intermediate to advanced players is what I recommend this bundle for, but it is a very good one that I can highly recommend. Both vehicles perform very well, so it's good. Well, at this point, if you watch my shop reviews more than twice, you can say this section for me. Open the free containers. Don't buy the paid containers. Because all of these are negative chance crates, which means is if you put money into them, you will get less value out of them than if you would have invested that same money into, for example, gold or a premium tank. Now, it's a little bit different with positive value crates, where you get the value of the crate back, and uh, then you get something extra. For example, a gold crate costs 5,000 gold, and you're guaranteed to get 5,000 gold back, plus extra. Then it's a little bit different, but most of the crates in World Tank Splits are negative return crates, which makes them very terrible and absolutely not worth buying whatsoever. And the Mega Containers, the Cobra Containers, the American Containers, they are included in that negative return stack. Now, these ones are positive return, because... You invest nothing and you get something that's a good thing we have the draws which most of the time are negative return as well especially these crate ones because you're going to get pretty much nothing for the most part uh, because these crates especially mystery boxes and also these black boxes and also the collect them all containers are essentially three of the worst if not the three worst types of crates that world of science blitz has to offer because again there are also tiers to how terrible the gambling crates are it's not just one uniform pile. And the same goes for the resource draw. I mean, it is incredibly cheap right here, going up to 500 gold. But let's be honest, none of these items in here are worth 500 gold on their own. These times 10 XP is you can get essentially as an add-on in other bundles. So I would assume that spending that amount of gold isn't really worth it. But for 10 gold, if you play it once, you can essentially get a decent return for it. I mean, unless you get the splinters and the splinters are worth nothing. Now that's 18,000 credits, 10 gold is worth 4,000 credits, so made some profit there. So, again, positive return. Unfortunately, if you were to get the splinters, you get a negative return. Now this offer container is a lot more interesting because 2 euros 50, 1,500 gold. So 1,500 gold is more value than 250 at regular gold price. So you're not really going to lose, you're probably going to lose when you get the AMX 1357 in this bundle rather than the 1500 gold because in this offer the 1500 gold is preferable to the AMX 1357 in my opinion because here's the thing this can be a fun little tier 7 vehicle but it neither has value in terms of making credits nor does it have much value in having long-term good fun because this thing gets chewed out very quickly it has a 90 alpha damage and uh, six shells in the magazine so before you're gonna enjoy this vehicle in the long term, you've probably already given yourself carpal tunnel, so mm, not the greatest idea here. This can make sense. Look at the value, look at the price. 1 euro 20 for 250 gold. That's the rel rel blah, 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 blah. That's the regular conversion. If it's better than that, here we have 1.5k for 250. That's a good deal, essentially. And then we get to the Turning the Tide event, which is kind of an ironic title given the new matchmaker that essentially screwed the most important thing of the game, and that is to have fun with the game because the new matchmaker creates very much unbalanced matches. The goal, essentially, to have as much fun for the average player, the casual player as possible, because here's the thing, the Unicum can't exist without the casual, the casual can exist about the Unicum. So the goal would always be to make the casual happy, not the Unicum. But in this case, nobody's happy. So well done, Wargaming, with that amazing change. However, there is an event as a compensation, I suppose, and the only valuable things in here are things like gold boosters, free XP boosters, credit boosters, because the main prize of this is a essential dud for 90% of the player base. The elephant, it says the upgraded Ferdinand. Yes, it does have 3,400 DPM, but here's the thing. It does have less alpha damage than the Ferdinand. It's slightly faster, but you're never really going to notice it. It does turn 
different and you are gonna notice the difference in turn speed really but uh, the acceleration will be the same the gun is quite upgraded in terms of its dpm the alpha damage is obviously 110 lower than on the Ferdinand. the Ferdinand on its own is a absolutely awful vehicle so this vehicle doesn't make that much better given that the armor is essentially the same only with upgraded sides so you're not gonna get happy with that essentially and for a credit grinding vehicle you don't want something like this there is a very small minority of the player base that are gonna enjoy a vehicle like this and if you are one of those guys you already know that you are one of them if you're questioning am i gonna enjoy this no no you won't probably isn't even obtainable for free we know wargaming at this point and if it were available for free like the e75 ts event in 2020 where you could get it for free it's a free tank sure get it but if you can't get it for free do not for the life of yourself pay for this unless you are sexually aroused by the existence of the Ferdinand. 